a disillusioned youth. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In today's show, we're going to look at the top 10 reasons millennials are angry about the economy and have every right to be. Let's kick this off with number one, and millennials are losing faith in democracy. According to a study, young people are less satisfied with democracy and more disillusioned than any other time in the past century, especially in Europe, North America, Africa, and Australia, according to a University of Cambridge study. Millennials who were born between 1981 and 1996 are more disillusioned than Gen X, those born between 1965 and 1981, or baby boomers who were born between 1944 and 1964. Across the world, younger generations are not only more dissatisfied with dem democratic performance than the old, but also more disconnected than previous generations at a similar life stage. The main reason behind the dissolution with democracy among young people was the inequality of wealth and income, the report said, citing figures showing that millennials make up around a quarter of the U.S. population, but hold just 3% of the wealth. Meanwhile, boomers held 21% of the wealth at the same age. And this you see actually in the investing habits of many young people who take high levels of risk because they realize not only are they behind, but the system isn't working for them, and they're looking for that Hail Mary to catch up. Let's take a look at number two, which is 81% of U.S. adults are worried about a recession hitting this year. The National Bureau of Economic Research, the arbiter of calling recessions, defines one as a significant decline in economic activity that is spread across the economy and lasts more than a few months. The last recorded recession took place in 2020 when the coronavirus pandemic spurred a mass shutdown and layoffs across the U.S. Since, however, the U.S. economy has seen a stunning recovery, the labor market has added back millions of jobs as nearing its pre-pandemic state. In addition, wages have gone up for many workers, including those in lower-paying jobs. But just for all that good news, we clocked in a negative first quarter GDP. Get a second quarter, you're at a recession, putting us in a likely path for a second half recession this year. Inflation is a bogeyman when it comes to recoveries. That's because if prices continue to climb as they're projected to, people may begin pulling back on spending, which could lead businesses to halt hiring. The Federal Reserve is also poised to continue to raise interest rates, which will slow down the economy to curb inflation. And many of those challenges are facing young people as well as we take a look now at the next issue, which is volatility in the stock market, especially at a time when young people need to see their wealth growing and expanding. Well, the market has a different idea for him. Number three, earnings exasperate stock market volatility whipped up by the Fed. And heightened volatility has gripped markets since mid-January when the Federal Reserve's intentions to aggressively fight inflation became apparent. The central bank's first rate hike in three years sent treasuries into a tailspin and dented the appeal of stock market's big companies. War in Ukraine... Renewed COVID lockdowns in China and the lingering threat of recession add to the market headwinds, making it a risky prospect to see any rebound as the end of the turbulence. And for other generations, they saw a steady increase in the market and weren't used to all this volatility. And when, like I said, millennials are already behind on their savings, what they need is a roaring bull market to catch up. The tech titans covered a lot of stomach churning, but now a confluence of events has ripped that cover off and investors are feeling a choppiness across the board. Inflation has been like an unwelcome house guest. While the hawkish Fed pivot is hitting risk assets indiscriminately, the bottom dropped out with geopolitical uncertainty hitting companies across the board. And that takes us to number four, which you might be able to guess, inflation. Inflation it quickens to 8.5% ratcheting up pressure on the Fed. And you start to look at where this impacts young people in terms of housing, savings, and spending, while inflation is taking a big bite out of their pay. The U.S. consumer prices rose in March by the most since 1981, underscoring the painfully high cost of living and reinforcing pressure on the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates even more aggressively. The consumer price index increased 8.5% from a year earlier, following a 7.9% annual gain in February, according to the Labor Department. Gasoline costs drove half the monthly increases, while food was also a sizable contributor as Americans paid more for vegetables, meats, and dairy products. And however, food, rent, and a few other items look to remain troublesome and act to slow the expected retreat in inflation in the year ahead. 
And for young people, of course, rent prices are a big problem as they look to try to get into a house, which home prices continue to rise and now interest rates are up. And so inflation is having a huge impact on this young generation where my generation and older generations really didn't face rising inflation. We faced just the opposite, disinflation, which is far more palatable towards your income. Let's take a look at number five, which is 47% of American young adults currently live with their parents. As statistics shared widely on Facebook had many commentators dismayed about the financial independence of Gen Z and millennial young adults. 52% of young adults now live with their parents, the highest rate ever, surpassing even the Great Depression. The most educated and the most in debt generation in history did everything they were supposed to do and got this, the system does not work. And the most recent data collected in October 2021 shows that 46.5% of young adults now live with their parents based on U.S. Today's analysis of monthly data from the current population survey. And so you start looking at a volatile stock market, inflation, and all these other factors, and you start to understand why people are still at home because the job market just isn't there. But there's one thing that shouldn't put you back at home, and that is a significant loss in your portfolio. You're a long-term investor, be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. I'll put a link up there in the corner and the description below. And this takes us to number six, of course, as we've talked about, which is wages. And that is a huge impact on younger generations who are not seeing the wage growth that many of their older generations saw. Number six, how almost half of all Americans work in low wage jobs. Almost half of U.S. workers between ages 18 and 64 are employed in low wage jobs, according to the Brookings Institution. Low wage jobs are pervasive, representing between one third to two thirds of all jobs in the country's almost 400 metropolitan areas. And you might wonder why this is such an issue that other generations didn't face. Because when you are in a global economy, you compete with workers all over the world. And if you can do your job from home, there's a good chance that someone in another part of the world may be able to do the same job at a much lower price. Most of the 53 million Americans working in low-wage jobs are adults in their prime working years or between about 25 to 54, which certainly would include millennials. Their median hourly wage is $10.22 an hour. That's above the federal minimum wage of seven and a quarter an hour, but well below what's considered the living wage in many regions. And so there's little doubt of why many young Americans are stuck because wage growth and job opportunities just aren't there for them despite their education and the amount of debt they took on to get there. Even though the economy is adding more jobs, there's an increasing evidence that many of these new positions don't offer the kind of wages and benefits required to get ahead. A new measure called the Job Quality Index recently found there's now a growing number of low paying jobs relative to employment and above average pay. Thank you, globalization. For the U.S. overall, median household income is 66465 according to research, with roughly half of families earning actually less than that amount. And it's really hard to get ahead, particularly with inflation, with wages that low. The reality is that Americans are working but aren't earning enough to gain stable economic footings. Nearly half of all workers earn wages that are not enough on their own to promote economic security and as we talk about economic security there's one place as americans look for that and that's where they live which takes us to number seven up to one third of millennials face renting their entire life completely priced out of the u.s housing market the think tank which aims to improve the standard of living of low and middle income families said 40 percent of millennials those between born between 1980 and 1996 we're living in rented housing by the age of 30. That's twice as many of the Gen X, those born between 65 and 80. Number eight, 60% of borrowers have delayed financial decisions due to student debt. And now you can start to put all of these pieces of puzzle together. You have low wages, high rents, high inflation. They're behind on savings and that puts your financial decisions on the back burner and making this one a big reason why millennials are angry. Roughly 60% of U.S. adults who have held student loan debt have put off making important financial decisions due to that debt, according to a recent survey. For Gen Z and millennial borrowers or loan, that number rises to 70%. Student loans have prevented these borrowers from saving for retirement, as we already discussed, or emergencies, 
buying a home, as we just talked about, or paying off other debt like credit cards. Despite this, a majority of U.S. adults with student loan debt say that their degree has unlocked career and salary opportunities that they wouldn't be otherwise possible, highlighting the complicated relationship that many Americans have with their student loan debt. And, and of the U.S. adults surveyed who currently hold or have previously held student loan debt for themselves, 59% say they have delayed financial milestones due to their student debt. Emergency funds and retirement savings have taken the biggest hit, with 27% of respondents delaying saving for emergencies and 26 saying they're delaying saving for retirement, which means many young people are facing working longer and harder than generations of the past. And now that takes us to number nine. Young people are stressed out about oh, all over the world, but don't blame the pandemic, and for good reasons why. They're underpaid, overworked, dealing with inflation, and saddled in debt. Well, if you were them, you'd be stressed out too. Let's take a look. For Gen Z and millennial individuals in countries all over the globe, anxiety levels are high. Nearly half of Gen Z, 48%, and millennials, 44%, say they're stressed out all or most of the time, according to a 2020 survey. The causes of high stress are rooted in financial concerns, family welfare, and career expectations. But don't put the pandemic at the top of that list. Finances remain a particular point of stress. The majority of millennials, 67%, and Gen Z, 64%, say they often worry about their financial situation. And among both generations, the follow-up survey found a decline in those who believe their personal financial outlook will improve over the next year. Of course, with inflation running rampant, how can anybody think their situation is going to improve, adding even more stress to the stressful situation? Among the U.S. respondents, general financial concerns were even higher. Cited by 77% of millennials and 66% of Gen Z, there were significant declines in the 12-month financial outlook. Of course, with 81% of people thinking recession is coming, that's not going to help. With U.S. millennials who believe their situation will improve, dropping from 54% to 42%, and among Gen Zs, a decline from 45% to 36%. And that, of course, takes us to number 10, which is a very serious issue that's unfortunately not just plaguing young people, but plaguing people of all ages all around the world. Number 10, COVID mental health is a disaster for Gen Z and millennial employees. Gen Z and millennial employees have been struggling more with their mental health. And as you can see why, with numbers one through nine, exactly what they're facing than older generations during the pandemic. 71% of Gen Z and 59% of millennial employees have reported a mental health issue during the pandemic compared to 36% of Gen X and 22% of baby boomers, which is a staggering issue to face for such a young generation. The pandemic has added or compounded stressors that young workers were already coping with. These include less job security, less housing stability, more debt, and lower wage earnings, as we just discussed about, than previous generations. It's not surprising that younger workers may be struggling more in terms of their mental well-being, which is very unfortunate for that generation. So now you know these are the top 10 issues that millennials are facing, why they're angry about the economy, and why they should be. And if we do enter a recession, well, unfortunately for many of those young Americans, it's going to get even worse. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.